Hello, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. Look, this has just arrived, kindly donated by a chap who took it off his boat. Didn't know what to do with it, so he gave it to me. It's a Sailor R105 receiver. Document working. Andrew was smuggled into Windsor Castle to avoid there we are. attention on these occasions. It's got, and uh, what is it, 20 something crystal controlled channels worked by these push buttons. I've only got 18 crystals in here. So you've got 2182 of course, 1792, 1673, loads of them, 2810, 2782. Of course the trouble is now, the trawler band's gone. No one uses it, which is a great shame. Uh, this would have been fantastic back in the early 70s when I think this was manufactured 71, I read somewhere. So, S-meter, AM, SSB, uh, long wave, medium wave, short wave only up to four, what is it, 4.2 megs. The reason being, for local, in, the, in like in the English Channel, boats, yachts, that sort of thing, they want to contact UK stations or somewhere locally. They're not going to be right out in the middle of the Atlantic and want to contact as was Porter's Head or Knighton Radio back in the old days. So they use the four meg marine band, that's the highest frequency band. You would use, is there, there's a 16 meg marine band, isn't there, I believe an eight meg. I think there was 21 something meg a marine band in the old days. So this isn't really a radio to use in the middle of the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean because you'd want the higher bands. But for local stuff, sailing down to the Mediterranean, for example, fine. It is a shame that uh, all these preset frequencies... I remember Night and Radio on the Isle of Wight on 2182 saying to a ship, yeah, go to 2241, so of course you press the button. There we are, 2241, press the button. Whereas I would have to tune. I had two receivers, so I could monitor 2182 and whichever one they'd gone to. Or if they were working duplex, I could listen to both frequencies at the same time. I've written this down here. It covers 300 to 5... 3.5 kilohertz. Okay, they've marked that as NW, that would be uh, nautical or something. That's where the beacons are, the non-directional beacons, you know, 300 to 535 kilohertz. Uh, long wave, 170 to 350, so you've got BBC Radio 4 on 198 and uh, what was it on 252? It was Atlantic, wasn't it? Then it was Ireland RTE1 then they pull the mast down, and that's the end of that. <laughs> so there's nothing. Oh, there's Algeria on 252 or something like that. Then shortwave, or HF, 1600 to 4.2. So 1.6 to 4.2 megs. Do they call it HF or MF? I think in the marine speak, that would be MF. 1600 to 420. Right, that's it. Shall we have a look inside now? I think I've told you what's going on here. Oh, it was 24 or 12 volts. On the back there's a switch, it was set to 24. I've uh, put it on to 12 volts, I don't have 24 volts here. Right, I'm going to take it out because first of all the dial bulbs need replacing so I'm going to see whether I've got anything suitable for that. Right, I've replaced the dial bulb. Um, let's turn it on. I've taken the knobs off because uh, they were very greasy. So I've got to turn it on with a pair of pliers. That's a, a dimmer for the bulbs. Can you see that working? Yeah. So that's that. Um, I've had a look at the I've had a look at the crystals. Now here's a picture with the, the cover off the crystals. So you can adjust the to an extent anyway. You can pull the crystal either way a little bit uh, from its fake frequency. And then there's the aerial tuning for each crystal. Will you see that in there? The threaded uh, studs with the screwdriver slot in the end, that's the aerial tuning. So you just tune for maximum on the S meter. And the, I don't know whether you can see, there's a tiny variable capacitor in there, a little preset capacitor, which is just to pull the crystal exactly onto frequency. It's all quite clean, all looks quite nice. I have seen some pictures of these online somewhere well, they're very rusty because obviously being at sea you've got the salt air you know everything is just 
salt air and spray. I mean, not spray in the cabin where this would be, but the air is just salt, isn't it? And I've seen quite a few of these where the paint's lifted off the front and they're very rusty. I've cleaned up the dial glass or perspex. I thought it was scratched. It looked like it was scratched, but I managed to polish it out with um, Duraglit. So that's good. Very nicely made. There's a, a socket on the back for loop air. You see you've got uh, antenna two, and antenna one, and antenna two loops. Now that's for the direction finding. On the on NW, I must look up to what NW is. Uh, I just call it nautical wave. You know the 500 KCs in the old days? 500 KCs, where it was all CW, Morse code. Uh, that obviously covers uh, 500 and uh, all the beacons. I'll show you a beacon in a minute. I'll let you hear our local one at Shoreham Airport. SHM. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's my CW. <laughs> a bit of Morse code for you. Um, yeah, what else to say about it? Uh, I'll turn it on, let you hear the beacon. Hang on a minute. Right, here we go. That's Shoreham SHM. Quite nice. Shoreham Airport's only, what is it, seven miles? No, not even that. Six miles to the east of me, along the coast there. Um, so what you would do with the meter, you've got your loop aerial, uh, probably above, you know, outside the boat, you've got a wheel inside. So you, you turn the wheel, get your compass bearing from the wheel. Okay, so it's that way. Then go to another one, another beacon, and uh, see where that, you know, on, on your map, you can find out where you are. Because these days, <laughs> with GPS, you, you know exactly to within sort of a couple of feet where you are. Quite amazing. But of course, back in the day, this was all they had. They had to have some sort of beacon. Surprisingly, a lot of the beacons, uh, such as Shoreham, are still going. They, they were originally for aircraft. So in your aircraft, you can tune into a beacon. You know which airport it is that you're, you're aiming at. We well, don't aim an aeroplane, do we? You might do. <laughs> Happy days. So that's that. I'm going to put the knobs back on in a minute. They're very greasy, as is this chrome round here. This is very greasy and dirty. All needs a good clean up. So yes, when I went to uh, North Foreland to take my Morse code exam, GNF, North Foreland, they were transmitting on 500 kcs they still call it 500 kc not kilohertz because it was known as 500 kcs in the marine world and i saw this chap on the key he was bashing out morse good grief i've just passed my test at 12 words a minute and this bloke's bashing away on the key and receiving fast cw and i said to him i'm impressed when he finished i said i'm impressed he said keep at it you'll do that one day i never did do that I got pretty good, I still use CW. Anyway, waffling now. So far, so good. Working nicely. I'm going to go and check the knobs and I'm going to show you some photos of the inside. The knobs are okay. They're degreasing nicely in bathroom cleaner, whatever it is. I don't know my way around this radio. There's a picture. Is that I? It looks like IF. I've got to look at the manual. I'm not sure that the manual shows really what's what. But uh, there's that picture there, which is quite good. There's a picture down at the, it's, it's the main switch for the various aerials, AM, SSB, mode switch, I suppose you'd call that down there. Very nicely built, isn't it? And we go over to the left-hand side, which shows the speaker and the crystal assemblies in there, all the push button assemblies. And finally, just a photo of the top view of the receiver. I'm really pleased with it. The chap said to me, he said, I had the transmitter, which was bolted on top. He said, I gave that away. <laughs> Imagine that, this on top band, you know, or 80 meters um, with the transmitter would have been like, I don't know whether the transmitter was SSB or just AM, but what a fantastic thing to have the transmitter matching on top. There we are, not to worry. If anyone's got a matching transmitter you don't want, drop it off, that'd be nice, thanks. By the way, the IF frequency is 600 kcs, sorry, kilohertz, 600 kilohertz. So for example, the crystal in, uh, which one was it? One, two, three, four, five. Um, this is 
in here it's 2448 kilohertz right the crystal so if you minus the IF you get 1848 so if you want to you know what I hope to do is um, I don't know the price of crystals these days probably horrendous because they're not used that much not like they used to be in the old days of course what I hope to do is there's some aircraft frequencies Shannon Air Radio Shanwick in Ireland uh, the North Atlantic route they're on 2.8 something or other megs I don't know whether I'd be able to pull one of the crystals I mean there's one there 2810 uh, what else have we got no, that's, the, that's the only one two eight I just wonder whether I could stick a couple of these on the aircraft frequencies uh, the air, hang on let me see if I can tell you what the aircraft frequencies are hang on a minute there's a few here there's uh, Gander um, Iceland Shanwick 2872 Shanwick 2890 uh, Shanwick 2899 there are quite a few obviously only used at night on the uh, the lower frequencies like that but I just wondered how much crystals are might be an idea to especially with the blank ones here look, there's a one two three four there's five blanks there be quite nice to have aircraft frequencies written in there wouldn't it it wouldn't uh, spoil the radio of course at all spare fuses in a little packet there with a an allen key as well not sure what the allen key is for but uh, I can find out no doubt Okay, I think that's about it. I'll just uh, have a quick think. Oh, I might have, might have a photo of underneath. I haven't done that yet. I'll just show you that. Hang on a second. There's underneath. See the crystal filter there. Very nicely built, isn't it? I used to like sailor equipment, but back in the day when I worked in marine electronics, I'm going back to the 70s, I, I did work on not this particular receiver, but one or two bits of sailor equipment normally we'd fit extra crystals things like that because they didn't need repairing as such you get the odd fault crop up but what i would like is a loop aerial i might have to look into that and as i said the transmitter to sit on top are oh, wonderful right hope you've enjoyed that i'm going to go and make sure these knobs are clean put them back on clean everything up and put it back in its cabinet and install it i'm running out of space i've got the hro the r209 the FRG7, the Marconi CR100, the little HF150, the low HF150. This little thing, I've done a video on that, I think. The ATS20 Plus. Quite a arrangement, an array of receivers. Right, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.